they are not yet come back, but I have spoke with one that saw him die who reported that he very frankly confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. As one who had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed, as it were, a careless trifle. There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Ah, worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude is now. Thou art so far before, the swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. Hast thou less deserved that the proportion of both payment and thanks might have been mine? Only thing I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which doing but what they should save towards your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labor to make thee full of growth. Noble Banquo, hast thou less deserved? Tar must be known, no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. My plenteous joys, wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, know we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. But honor must not unaccompanied invest him only, but signs of nobleness, like stars, shall shine on all deservers. From hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. The rest is labor which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife at your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Cogdor. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall, or a sore leap, for my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my deep and dark desires. The eye wink the hand, and yet let that be, which the eye fears when it is done to see. True worthy banquet, he's full so valiant in his commendation that I expect. It's a banquet to me. Let's after him whose care has gone before to bid its welcome. It is a peerless kinsman.
that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor have him peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great, glamis, worthy cadre, greater than both, by the all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall son that morrow see. Your face, my vein is as a book, where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time, bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch. But shall do all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. 